How are you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizzo here, and I got some very exciting details when it comes to benchmarks. And you're probably getting a little bit tired of hearing about AMD's Ryzen's processors and AMD news. So today, I got a special treat for you, because today we will talk about Intel. I know some of you back there are probably booing and don't, don't really hate on Intel. This is just something to keep in mind, especially if you're thinking about building a new PC. So Intel's i9-13900K has been spotted out in the wild with benchmarks. And again, we hear something from Ertenla on Biddle.com. Ertenla posted up some very interesting specifications when it comes down to this very processor. Because is it really competitive enough for you to purchase, especially that Intel's 12th generation just came out last year. So she did test out an Intel i9-12900K with MSI Z690 godlike motherboard. I have a card right above me about Intel's i9-12900K being tested on ASUS's Hero motherboard. So you can compare the two if you would like. Well, during the test, as it seems, Intel's i9-13900K can outperform Intel's i9-12900K by up to 30%. Intel's Raptor Lake was tested on Cinebench R23, which is a newer version of Cinebench. And that's something that we exactly wanted to see compared to what we found earlier when we talked about AMD's 7600X going up against Intel's 13900K, as you see right above me. This is a great leap for Intel if it's that much more improved after since they got rid of the whole tick and top part of when it came to Intel processors. Now, when it comes out with Intel's 13900K, it has up to 16 efficiency cores and eight performance scores. Cinebench proves that the multi-threading has improved drastically since then. This would also help Intel's i9's 13900K when it comes to performance cores. Naturally, it will perform a lot better because the clock speeds can increase and so will the cache for the processor. So for the specification of Intel's newest, most powerful Intel's i9-13900K does have up to 5.8 gigahertz of boost speed. It can go down as 5.5 gigahertz and each efficiency core can go as low as 4.3 gigahertz. So this is just the beginning of things because remember how we spoke about the TDB for Intel's newest processors. Now, the most interesting thing is that compared to AMD where they had as high up to 170 watts with their processors, Intel also still talks about having about 105 to 125 watts and they will have a possible performance mode that has been spoken about amongst enthusiasts. Newest processor is that you can actually even bring up the wattage up to 350 watts if you really wanna push that processor. Even though Intel's Raptor Lake does push that much power, it still is more efficient in its own beneficiary way. Because the reason being, the cores that it actually has efficiency actually will require less wattage. So it will be very minimal when you see the difference between Intel's 12900K and Intel's 13900K. So with the system that she did show, that they did use Colifer's RGB RAM, which personally I'm not a large fan of, Never been a big fan of colorful products. It is rated at DDR5 at 4,800 megahertz with a RTX 3090 GPU. She also used a Fantex 360 AIO cooler on top of the processor. And here is what's interesting. As you can see with Ada 64's test, it was locked at 4.9 gigahertz frequency for its performance cores. As we spoke earlier about how the TDP, it would go up to 280 watts and the temperature would go as high as 86 degrees Celsius on average. Naturally, Intel's i9-12900K does require a little bit more power to reach those kind of speeds, and because it draws a little bit more power, what does power bring? A problem when it comes to heat. On Raptor Lake, you can see a difference of 61 degrees Celsius, so that's nearly a 20 degrees difference with less power required from that processor to perform just as well. And as you can see from the image, AVX512 is also enabled. So the real difference is once you lock the processing speed up to 5.2 gigahertz on both processors, 
then you notice a minimal difference when it comes to wattage. It's only a 10 watts difference at TDP. With Intel's i9-13900K, you're reaching about 259 watts versus Intel's i9-12900K, which reaches about 269 watts. But really what is key, even though the wattage is different, the temperature is the main key when it comes down to it. What really reigned that this new processor as much more improved is the Cinebench R23 performance because it reached its multi-threading up to 30%, much more of an improvement. That is a key when it comes to processing speed. This is great for people who are enthusiasts and also for who use their PCs for content creation. Another factor to bring up is a very popular processing test, which is pretty hard on CPUs is Prime 95, which was a pretty interesting as you can see with this current test. Raptor Lake running at 5.2 gigahertz, at full speed and push it up to 92 degrees celsius all the way up to 378 watts because this is only a testing sample and a lot of this is just information that is currently out on the internet no different than amd intel will also go through the same process where intel will have more of a refined product once it is released intel is going to release their processors now on october 20th 2022 just like any other product just because it is a newer processor from intel doesn't necessarily mean it is better than the 12th generation meaning intel's i9 3900k when it was set at 5.2 gigahertz couldn't compete with intel's i9 12900k at 5.2 gigahertz instead it underclocked compared to its predecessor it is with the sample processor at its current stage. It could be different once Intel finalizes their product and releases it out to the public. If you're looking for Intel's i9-13900K, it will release by October 20th of 2022. Again, it's gonna be a month delayed behind AMD's release. If you're looking to build a very good PC and you wanna compare the two, that would probably be the best bet. And more than likely, the pricing is going to be pretty similar to when the 12900K was released, which was about $649.99 USD. And I would imagine they will probably more than likely hold the same price to stay competitive against AMD's $699.99 for AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X. So there's probably going to be a $50 difference between the two. And more than likely, Intel will probably add a little addition, maybe a $20 discount if you purchase a motherboard with it. AMD may do the same to compete when both of them are out and available to the market. Intel is also expected to release six different models of their processors and see if Pat Gilsinger can do something different and have the PC consumers see if there is any change in their product. I know that is hard to take in, especially how Intel kind of took advantage of being the most dominant processors out there. Now with AMD being on top, it's gonna to be a very interesting battle between the two, especially for the year 2022. When I do build this next build, it will be an AMD build since I already did a Intel build last year. And I would love to do both, but fortunately my wallet isn't gonna like that very much. So fam bam, guys, which processor are you aiming for? Are you gonna go for AMD or will you get Intel's newest 13th generation? Let me know in the comments right down below. If you know anyone else who is into PCs and tech, make sure you share this video with them. And if you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.